I believe that that's one thing that we have to really separate in our mind when we're feeling condemned. Yes. You have to understand that is not God. That's the enemy speaking to you. God convicts us. He doesn't condemn us. You know, it's one thing to talk about forgiving the abusers from 30 years ago, 40 years ago, well now, you know, 45 years ago. And even as Christians, people kind of get excited. Yeah, wow, Christine forgave those people that abused her back then. But then you forget, we're still living today. And so now what's, you know, it is highly unlikely, almost impossible that anything like that will ever happen again. So I'm not likely to ever have to forgive that kind of offense. Um, but and nowadays, it's, um, it, it, it doesn't change. It's a different sort of pain. But here I was walking, and David says in the Psalms, you know, it would have been okay if my enemy, because sometimes it's yeah. easy to understand when an enemy does something to hurt you. Like if someone says something on Twitter, it doesn't even, if I don't know them, it doesn't even affect me really at the end of the day. I don't even know that they've done it. So I often think, you shouldn't waste your time because I don't even read it. But, um, but when it's a close friend, and, and he says, but my friend who I used to go to the house of God with, that we worship, and I think that's a lot more of a reality with people. You go, what do I do? And our churches are full of this with people that I was in intimate friendship with. We were praying together. We loved each other's kids, you know, and then all of a sudden something happens. And for me, I think probably the last few years of my life, the last couple of years, a, a friendship betrayal was the the biggest unexpected um sort of kick in the guts and that's what in the Eugene Peterson version in the Psalms he says what do you do when you've been kicked in the gut you've got to be close to kick someone in the gut see a lot of people if they're far away and they might, might say things about me it doesn't wind me because it's not it's not close but if you're part of my family or my intimate friendship circle oh boy and that then is I think why Jesus is you know, seven, 70 times seven. And guess what? My mercies are new tomorrow morning again and the next morning and then new every morning because we're going to have to get good by this. We'll all men know that we are his disciples by the love that we have one for another. Now, I love to preach this stuff, but God was like, sweetheart, you, you want to write a chapter about this? You're going to walk about through David, it. his own family. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, didn't even... He didn't qualify in his father's eyes oh, yes. to be the next king. But his brothers qualified yes. for whatever reason. His yes. father didn't understand what God was doing. So there's plenty of people out there who people don't understand what God's doing in your life. They don't understand the anointing. They yes. don't understand that you've, you know, you've got an assignment from God. And you can't let that hold you back yeah. because David was in that same oh, yeah. boat. He was out in the shepherd's field. Uh, the prophet Samuel came yes. to his house and said, I'm here to anoint the next king. And he said, oh, great. Well, I've got, you know, seven sons that you can choose from. And totally. paraded him in front of all of, of, of him. And he said, well, the king's not here. Do you have any more sons? And it was only then yeah. that he brought David in. And I can only imagine oh. how David felt. I mean, Thanks a lot. <laughs> there's his brothers. Did he hang his head? Did he That's come right. in yeah. thinking... Wow, am I even the one? I mean, am I, I'm the last pick. Am I even the one? Totally. But it was that day that Samuel said, this is the one and anointed him. But you think about that and you think about that rejection. Oh, yeah. You know, think about what the enemy does. It, it brings condemnation. Yes, all the you time. You know, and when you're under that heavy condemnation totally. and that you, you can't even find the faith. So yeah. I believe that that's one thing that we have oh, to yeah. really separate in our mind when we're feeling condemned. Yes. You have to understand that is not God. No. No. That's the enemy speaking yes. to you. God convicts us. He doesn't condemn us. Totally. He shows us the way. He doesn't say you're a loser. Exactly. <laughs> you know yeah. what? You're, you, you, know, you, you stay in the back of the church, Christine. Totally. You know what? Hide yourself. Yeah. That's not what God does. Totally. He loves us to repentance. His goodness brings us to the place of understanding yes. so that we can turn. So, you know, I think that's another key oh, yeah. to bring people out of that place that even like you felt that yes. day. And you said, I made the choice to, to, to understand the difference between condemnation yes. and understanding of conviction. How, how do I separate the It is the huge because, you know, Scripture tells us, therefore, there is now no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. So... No means none in the Greek, Hebrew and Aramaic, that word, there is no condemnation. But then you've got to understand the enemy's profile, job profile, he's the accuser of the brethren. And 
as last I checked, he's very gainfully employed. He's doing what he does best, accusing the brethren. That's why you think, what is this incessant voice in my head? And normally when you're just about to go to sleep or just about to wake up, the accuser of the brethren, he begins, which is why Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for us all of the time. And we have got to remind ourselves, though, I've got to tell myself because condemnation comes to us more naturally than conviction. It's God's kindness that leads us to repentance. So he convicts us of sin so we can be free to keep moving on. Condemnation gets us stuck um, with that whole thought that I can't and I won't. And I think it hinders giving forgiveness and receiving forgiveness, exactly. both things. Because exactly. sometimes, and someone, you might be watching this and you're actually, as I've been talking, you're like, I'm the one that did the thing to the friend, Christine, that you're talking about. I want you to know. I mean, I've done it to plenty of people too, sometimes unintentionally, and I talk openly about that. It's not just, so that's why Jesus is, make sure that you're forgiving and receiving forgiveness because the fact is oftentimes we do things to hurt people that we don't even realize that we've done. As a mother, how many times have I said things unthinking or and my kids have taken it? I've got two teenage daughters, so, you know, that that can be translated with hormonal <laughs> patterns during the month of how so you know um I, i've several times i've said to them i'm so sorry will you forgive mommy I, I shouldn't have said it with that tone of voice or you know just sometimes i haven't thought about it so i think that you have to understand we have to give it but you might be listening to this going i i did that to a friend i want you to know even for you there is now no condemnation and i agonize through that chapter because i'm saying that to you and for me to be able to say it to conviction with conviction i could be now saying it to the person that really hurt me and you might know that and i want you to know i'm free and you're free and that's the whole point of it but i also <laughs> think it's it's freeing to ask for forgiveness very exactly. much so from people you know maybe there are people i mean there are people that i mean i remember you know things little things even growing up that that I might have said or did to somebody and I don't know who they are today and I can't find them but you know I'm sorry yes I, I am so sorry yes. if God would have you watching today that's how I, feel. I think you know what I'm talking about and I'm yes. sorry <laughs> but that's that's also a very freeing thing because yeah. you know very if you don't so. receive forgiveness and you don't give forgiveness Satan loves to use that oh, yes, to to it could wreck your marriage. Oh, very much. It could wreck your children. Mm -hmm. It could wreck all. You could, your life could be wrecked. We could all, we could all be victims of something, and it just destroy it. It's there to destroy because that's it's what good to get the quick was. at repenting. Yeah, hello. Absolutely. You know what? If yeah. you if you don't carry condemnation, totally, you can get quick at repenting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because you can come to terms with Beautiful. it. I mean, I. I I probably do this five times a day if a thought comes into my mind. And I think that that is not of God. That's not mm -hmm. me. You wow. know what? I'm better than that. Yeah. And I just say, God, forgive me. And I don't carry that with me yeah. because I want to open myself up to say, you know what? I'm free. Yeah. I yeah. am free not to walk in con. I'm free to love. Yeah. I'm not stuck in this. And yeah. that's what we have to get good at doing. We have to get good at recognizing Who's talking to us? Yeah. Yeah. And we have to get good at saying, hey, I, I, you know, when I recognize it, say, you know what? Let I don't want to think those thoughts. Yeah. I, I don't want to form a weapon against my husband, yeah. my children, my neighbor, because yeah. that's what the enemy wants us to do. They, yeah. He wants us to give a good excuse why, why something can't happen in yes. our life yes. or I why it happened something. this way. And when you just... Say I'm not I'm not giving in to that. I, I I'm I'm you know what I'm asking for forgiveness. I'm gonna be a quick repenter. Yeah. You know, I believe that it frees you up to hear from God, yes. to move forward, and to not carry that con you know, because there's nothing worse than thinking, ah, oh, I, I thought this and I thought that. And it just it just heaps, you know, injury upon insult upon, you know, and so you just have to get free of that and be quick. And it's amazing what God will do in your life. You know, I remember even um, at Bible college, one of the things that we learned, and it stuck with me, is, um, the, you know, this great theologian comes in like, be unoffendable <laughs> and keep short accounts. If you have those two things, um, you will 
actually move forward in life because it is amazing and sometimes we carry offenses and we we block a lot of God's blessing through the offense that's in our heart through the bitterness that's in our heart and God wants to pour unexpected favor unexpected blessing unexpected breakthrough God can still part red seas but if we're going to hang on to that offense if we're going to keep accounts I mean some of us women are unbelievable we could turn to our husband and remember something from seven years ago what he was wearing where he was standing what time a voice it was and we remind uh, and you know Nick is like really Christine you need to get a better forgettery you need to really really develop your forgettery and just because he, he like he doesn't even remember that thing happened I mean my husband has got this amazing ability to quickly forgive quickly move on and it does lead to the freedom you're talking about the joy you're talking about the it produces the fruit of the spirit and I think a lot of times we're trying to get the fruit and God's going you know what you can just produce it if you would let go of this if you would um, ask for forgiveness and give forgiveness, be unoffendable, keep short accounts. God says he takes our sins, casts them as far as the east is from the west and remembers them no more. And maybe we would get um, a, a lot better off in life if we remembered some things no more. At TBN, our mission is to use every available means to reach as many individuals and families as possible with the life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you for helping make the gospel of grace go around the world. Without you, we couldn't do it. God bless you.